and I know the truth. You think I'm gonna let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? Fuck you. Be careful when you hear something that's laid out to be the truth. And because the person that's telling you what they say is true is speaking eloquently. Don't be deceived by that. There are some people who know how to lie so well. They know how to sprinkle in just enough truth and wrap it inside their lies where they got you thinking that somebody telling the truth. You can't be righteous and negative at the same time. Righteous people do righteous things. When you are listening to anybody that's trying to make you think that they anti-Luminati or any of this, like that, be very careful. In the interview with Shannon Sharp, Cat Williams said something that really stuck with me. He said, if you wanted me to speak more highly of you, then perhaps you should have treated me better. You don't get to narrate my story of my experience with you. I don't think Steve Harvey or anyone else that Cat Williams exposed has a right to tell us how and what to listen to. Let us have our own experience. You don't really have to tell us what the truth is, we will choose for ourselves. I think your job was just to do and say the right things, and based on our experience with y'all, we will know who is telling the truth and who is not. The most surprising part of this entire saga is the fact that I have listened to all the responses to Cat Williams from all the people he mentioned in the interview. None of these people have said he said anything that wasn't true, they are more mad that he told the stories and not that he lied. He came with receipts, and if he said anything other than the truth, I believe all of them would have been pulling out their receipts to shame the devil, but they couldn't because Cat Williams never lied about anything. To be honest, Cat Williams didn't even want to expose any of these people, they provoked him by lying in the interviews. That's why Cat decided to set the record straight. He said you shouldn't allow liars to control the narrative because they will deceive people, which I totally agree with. For most of them, it's all about money, which is why they don't care about what they say or do. Steve Harvey clearly said that he will never let him crumble because of integrity, because if he crumbles, all his people will suffer, therefore, integrity doesn't have a room in his heart. There is nothing new here because we have seen this with so many other celebrities who sold their souls to the devil. This is the part that made me love and respect Cat Williams even more when he said, I'm one of the richest people who ever lived. I wake up in the morning, and no matter where I am, I don't need anything. Whatever I need is right around me, and whatever I don't have, it's only because I don't have it. It's not because I can't get it. All I have to do is want it, and it belongs to me. Because I'm favored by God. It's not about money for him, but what's inside him. Let's listen to all the responses to Cat Williams. Ten years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy understand. club. Let me make it very clear, Cat Williams is an amazing, talented comedian, which is why I'm so frustrated. I sit from a from afar and I admire the man's talent. I don't like that you said anything negative about a woman of color that's getting her shot. What's up, y'all? What's up? It's, uh, we addressed this Cat Williams thing one time, man. I saw people on there doing a comment about that. Look, I have no idea what this brother is talking about. That joke is over 30 years old, close to 30-something years old. I did the Kings of Comedy in 1999. Probably have been doing that joke six, seven years before that. I don't even know if Cat was doing comedy then. So, you know, again, he a talented brother. I have no idea what you're talking about. I've never seen Cat do a, a space show joke. So, uh, you know, there may be something that he believes is true. I've, I've written a lot of jokes. I've had a lot of comedians steal my jokes as well. So I understand if you feel, you know, slighted by that, but that's my joke. That's my joke, dog. Grab a space show to the moon, cigarette, cutie pie rocking in the background. Parallel parking spaceship. It's my joke, though. So, two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy, and he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. I've been telling jokes since 
since 1996. 1996. This nigga said, oh, they wouldn't let her perform in a comedy store. That's true. They wouldn't let me perform on the white nights in the comedy store, but I performed on all the black nights. They wouldn't let me perform on the white nights at the improv, but I performed on all the black and Latino nights. And so, the rest of my... That was the craziest shit. That's what people, everybody overlooking the fact that Ludacris, he responded with a rap song. That lets you know how fucked up this shit is. If you say I've been at a gay party getting fined for to make you no song, I'm gonna call you a motherfucking liar. I'm gonna call you on your phone, you lying. You ain't seen me no motherfucking That made a rap, that responded with a jingle. <laughs> say, that lets you know he gives you to come back with a rap song. Of a hell of a rap song. They rapped in 20 some years. They made a rap song in 20 years. Soon as Cat Williams said, hey, I seen you coming out that, 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 that funny room, though. If we walking bow legged, you were you was you were, you were not needed before you went in. Your thighs were rubbed together. You come out of that bow legged. That boy say, say now he gonna make a song. I ain't never was ever was on my mind. They made a commercial jingle to respond to Cat Williams instead of saying you a goddamn lie. That's how, that's how you call. That's how you tell. He lying. You don't go right no one sixteen bar for no nigga. You get on the airway and say he lying, baby. Ain't never mother ain't never seen me coming out there and play walking bow legged. <laughs> <laughs> say, boy, <laughs> I ain't wrong. Say, um, I, the thing, because ain't nobody came out and called him a motherfucking lie. Nobody. Trick that the only one say, I kick your ass. I'm a The rest of them been, they been talking circles. <laughs> That's why I told you, I only want five million. And I don't want to make too many white friends, because that shit come from making white friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chrissy, Chrissy Jones, them were the last Dr. Dre, them, and did it. They the last nigga be them boys. The rest of that shit come from them white folks. I'm on to be on them white folks' stage. I'm gonna keep getting hit in the head with, with guns at the barber shop and, and throwing well, flower pots at <laughs> This is much safer than getting your shit around. <laughs> Fuck around, find out that big and all the white boys gotta suck it. Then you wanna be in this movie, don't you, Charles? Yeah, I heard you got a yeah, I heard you got a lumberjack. <laughs> who told you that? Harry. Uh, who told Harry? Buffy. Who told Buffy? Usher. Who told Usher? <laughs> Somebody. Uh, internet going crazy. Uh, comments that Cat Williams made. Uh, but if I can't speak on behalf of the other comedians, I, but the only thing I can speak for is myself. Uh, Cat made some comments on Shannon Sharp's show about uh, when I was on uh, Shannon Sharp was telling him the story of some of the behind the scenes from Friday after next. Let's start. Let's start with that. Uh, when I when I went out there, uh, let's just go back. In 2000, I was the host of BET Comic View and in the season 2004. Uh, I also worked on this show called Live from L.A., that was my first job with BET and uh, that's where I met Ice Cube uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken and Ice Cube was like man hey man I like your work uh, I want to do some stuff with you I want to put you in some movies and Ice Cube started putting me in movies which really uh, helped my career uh, I was in All About the Benjamins <laughs> but of course uh, when they changed the ending of it didn't, that part didn't make any sense but uh, then he put me in Friday After Next <clears throat> and uh, just for clarification I went out to audition for Friday After Next as Money Mike not the Santa Claus and that, that is that is the honest God truth. Uh, I had no reason to go on there and uh, uh, to go on Shannon Sharp show and lie about any of that. Uh, that that's what I auditioned for uh, was Money Mike. And I guess the producers, uh, Cube and everybody saw something different. And uh, I, I think that Money Mike character, uh, Special K, was going to come off as kind of like uh, just a uh, 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 wonder uh, a guy who was hanging around in the uh, strip mall who was just kind of being annoying yeah. and almost like a crackhead type of character that was right. Just, so yeah. Kat, I, I guess when Cat Williams uh, uh, did it, they added the whole pimp twist uh, to that. In comedy, you have to be lovable. Cat, I said, Cat is one of the most lovable comedians in the, in the world. And what I meant to say on the interview was, I, I meant to say, I don't know how much crack y'all think that smoke. He's a more lovable. But instead, I said, I don't care how much crack he smoke. And I've never seen Cat smoke no crack. You know, but um, I was. I was hoping it, he wasn't going to take it personal because even even um, Noriega hit me up after th that whole thing came out about me mentioning Cat, and he didn't even remember like he said when did this happen? Because I mentioned I was on Drink Champ and I'm this interview and he hit me up like he, he DM me like hey Mike, what did you say on there that I missed? 
That's how much it is. That's how much of a lust. I, I was saying, that's how you know I wasn't even insulting this guy. It was more giving him his props. Cat Williams was talking about himself once. And Cat Williams is a crazy person, but a brilliant comedian. And he said something that I, I've always thought. And he's like, I'm not a fan of me. And he goes, he goes like, I don't, you know, I don't particularly like me. You know, I was mm. like, that is why he's great. Because that makes you work so hard. At, like, the worst thing a comedian can be in the beginning is sure of themselves and then incompetent at the same time. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. Because you're not good, but you think you're amazing. What's cracking? It's your homie Ice Cube. Um, just wanted to address a few things. You know, everybody been checking out the internet. Um, my man, Cat Williams. Um, you know, first of all, I just want to say, you know, we shot that movie over 20 years ago. So, you know, people have different perspectives and it's been a long time. Um, I also want to say, you know, every comedian that I've worked with, every comedian that I've put in a movie, I only put them in the movie because I thought they was funny. I thought they was perfect for the part. Um, I tried to put them in a position to win. Um, that's what it's all about, you know. I don't, I don't, you know, I look at <clears throat> from, you know, Chris Tucker and Bernie Mac and Mike Epps, Cat Williams, um, you know, Ricky Smiley. Michael Blackson, um, Cedric, um, Kat, I mean, Kevin, Kevin Hart. Um, you know, all these guys I know are funny as hell. You know, they, I didn't discover them. You know, they were doing their stand up or doing their thing. And I, I knew that they were great and that they could act and that, um, you know, if I, if I have an opportunity, I was going to give them an opportunity. You know, to me, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, as far as, you know, specific things, you know, um, Cat was 100 on, on a few things. Uh, most of what he was saying, uh, a couple of things, you know, um, I just want to clarify. Uh, when we bring in a new you know, comedian, um, we do have them try out for different roles. So Ricky did um, give Money Mike a shot. Um, but when we saw him and, you know, we kind of saw how he moved and how he was, you know, um, auditioning, we decided that he would be a better, uh, you know, Santa Claus, uh, which was to me the perfect casting. Um, when we saw Mike, I mean, uh, <laughs> damn, I call him Money Mike. When we saw Cat, you know, when I saw him, I just knew that he was perfect for Money Mike. Um, and, you know, Cat, Cat, you know, said he wrote his role, which, I mean, the role was written, but he enhanced it. This is why Cat um, was so dope in the movie. You know, Money Mike had a small role, you know, about as big as the Santa Claus role. But when we start filming, he was giving us such magic that we kept expanding his role and giving him more to do because he was on point. Um, you know, when we shoot these movies, you know, for one, the scripts are fire or they wouldn't even do it. The scripts are la a laugh out funny. But we shoot the script, but once we get what we need from the script, we let the comedians ad lib, riff, you know, play with the words, do their thing. You know, we give them a take where they can, or two, three takes where they can go off and do what they feel. Um, you know, sometimes it makes the movie, sometimes it don't. You know, when somebody gives you jewels, you want to, uh, try to make sure that makes the movie um so in the movie there's second thing i want to clear up 
it was never, I would never shoot a rape scene uh, in a movie, especially like Friday, um, where you actually see this happening on camera. That ain't my style. If you check out any of my movies, they not raunchy. Um, you know, we did a movie called Players Club where the subject matter was a little raunchy, but but for the most part, um, even that, we we left it to your imagination. So the only reason that kind of stuff is in the movie is because you have three villains in Friday After Next. You have Santa Claus still in presence. You have Damon just got out of prison, uh, sweating, Craig and Dady for the rent money. And then you have Money Mike, you know, a pimp that treats his woman, uh, you know, like a property. So Craig is always fighting the villains in the movie, you know, from the Joker brothers to Debo. And so we always, we already had Craig fighting Santa Claus and the only real way to get rid of the other two villains was to have them go against each other. And the, the plier joke was always in the script, you know, it was never, um, we would never ever show that, you know, that's not my style. If you look at any of my movies. Um, so, you know, that was never, uh, discussion you know we you know at that point in everybody's career you know we we would listen to a certain extent but we wasn't gonna change the movie for it for any actor you know we we do what we feel and if, if it was a rape scene it would have been in the movie um there was no reason not to shoot it <laughs> But that's not my style. I don't even like that kind of shit in movies um, on camera. And so, um, you know, that was, to me, a little discrepancy there. Um, you know, Cat, he, uh, he wrote a lot of his part because, you know, like I said, he was giving us jewels. So we were keeping the camera rolling. He was coming off the dome. He was coming prepared every day to steal the show you know that was his mission and um you know that's what he did you know with the movie um and it it launched his career you know and um i'm proud of the movie i'm proud of um all the guys who've you know come through you know a q vision production and went on to do bigger and better things um and look you know, a lot of people are talking about pay and how much they was paid on these movies that were extremely low budget. You know, most of these guys work a couple of days, you know. And when you're doing a movie, there's over a hundred people working on the movie that need to get paid. Most of them gotta get paid every day. Um, and there's pre-production and post-production, even after you finish with the actors, you gotta pay editors and sound people in. And my movies are all about quality, so most of the money go up on the screen. I'm not giving you no bullshit. I'm not giving you no uh, low budget, you know, shit you can laugh at because it's so cheap. Um, so, you know, we try to put all the money on the screen. And so, any actor that's <laughs> mad at what they got paid, you know, just look at what you was doing. Look at where your career was at the time. You know, take a look at where it is now. And Friday has something to do with that, I believe. And I put a lot of people in movies, but they ain't never put me in a movie. So you can take that for what it's worth. You know what I'm saying? I've given a lot of these guys opportunities uh, and I still act, so I'm waiting for a call. I ain't got to produce everything or write everything. Um, I got love for all the comedians that I've worked with. Got, you know, much love for Cat. You know, he, uh, he spoke up for me a lot. And, uh, I just wanted to be clear and clarify some things. And, uh, shit, man. I hope y'all have a good 2024. Yeah, yeah.